So, uh, as we were listening to Rowan, I was thinking about personality tests. <laughs> and I'm on the left of the spectrum. Uh, and we're going to be talking about a specific problem. Um, it's not a terribly long paper, and it's going to be more a sort of, here's a problem, what are we going to do about it sort of paper. Um, now, one of the reasons that we can do this is because one of the places in the West Mediterranean, perhaps the place in the West Mediterranean with the most radiocarbon dates, is the Irene Candidate, with almost 100 dates now. And uh, a lot of those, I would guess, the vast majority are thanks to a whole series of projects that, that Roberto did. Oh, I can say this because he's not talking. Um, <laughs> that Roberto did there. But um, he was able to find all the charcoal that um, Bernardo Brea had put aside. He didn't know what to do with it. This is the really interesting thing um, that, 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 that Roberto has commented on in the past. But he kept it. And so that was analysed. And then there's been a lot more work recently, as we'll see, on uh, short life samples, so seeds and bone being dated. And so trying to get more accurate fix on, on the issue of the earliest Neolithic of West Central and Northwest, Northwestern Italy. Okay, a bit of self-publicity, that's what you have to do. Talking at a conference is about, um, is about marketing your ideas, isn't it? So, uh, just wanted to remind you, um, just take away conclusions about Liguria from the work I did looking at trying to do Bayesian models of uh, the North Italian early Neolithic. So there are seven dated early Neolithic sites in Western Liguria. And it seems that I worked out that the Neolithic was established by around 5630 at the very latest, and probably well before that date, perhaps even as early as the first century of the sixth millennium Cal BC. And here you can see uh, a table um, with uh, Bayesian model dates and uh, single uh, sample dates from the various uh, sites. Now, more recently, um, some research that um, Roberto did uh, with Didier Bander used a different way of approaching uh, the radiocarbon dates, the Chrono model uh, program. Uh, and this is taken from an article that they published in uh, Documenta Prehistorica uh, in 2017. And uh, what we can see here is uh, <coughs> Are samples that come from the new excavations that Roberto um, directed <coughs> in the Arena Candidate and AMS determinations on short life samples, so young sheep, uh, cereal seeds, uh, uh, and husks and hulls of, of cereals extracted from pottery. And um, they came up with a date of 5786 for the beginning of the impressor phase and 5467 for the beginning of the cardial phase. And you can see all the, all the numbers down there. Um, I'm not going to explain how it works or anything like that. I don't think this is the right place for that sort of thing. And um, in that paper, you'll also see this, um, this illustration um, thinking about the West Mediterranean in a slightly, from a slightly different perspective. And using the mode a posteriori of phases, as you can see, we've got the Irene Candida at 5786, Pond de Moon 5715, Rocco Oates at 5767, and Pero Signado 5826. And um, <coughs> the, the mode a posteriori dates for the various sites, earliest sites, are here on this illustration. Now, um, I think, well, I hope that this is a little bit clearer. I've done it in a different way, um, and I've used, um, rather than, than the chrono model method, I've used a more traditional Bayesian method. And what I wanted to, we want to draw attention to on this diagram is uh, a problem, a well-known problem, which is 
that the dates in West Central and uh, Italy and in North uh, and in Eastern Liguria are much, much date later than the dates in Western Liguria. Uh, and there seems to be something going on there. There seems to be a jump across the um, across the sea. These are the dates that I published in my book, so they're not, they don't include um, the uh, 12 new dates that um, Roberto published uh, with Didier Van Der. So there's a very big question that we need to ask ourselves. Uh, this isn't real, I know, but it's a great, it's a great illustration of what, what they might have been doing. What was it that took the Neolithic settlers to Western Liguria? And here you can see the Irene Candida cave just there. <coughs> so we know that they were navigating. So there are some reports of obsidian in Liguria, pre-Neolithic. They're not very reliable. But we've certainly got Mesolithic activity on Sardinia between the 9th and the late 7th. Um, and we've got New Mesolithic activity in Corsica as well during the Mesolithic. So no problem about navigation. We've got highly mobile groups based on the continent making irregular visits to particular sites. So we, if they're knocking around in Corsica and Sardinia in the Mesolithic, we can suggest that the West Mediterranean seaboards were probably well known to mariners before the spread of the Neolithic, and that the rapid spread of the Neolithic through the Tyrrhenian and Ligurian seas area was not the exploration of unknown territories. I think we also need to reflect on the importance of landmarks. It's perhaps no accident that the earliest site in, uh, one of the earliest sites is a very well-known landmark. This is a French spy's drawing of the coast of Genoa. And here's a photograph of the dune, the uh, Arena Candida, that was underneath uh, the um, cave uh, until it was quarried for making glass. But if we look at the dates, those are the dates for the Neolithic in the west, and these are the dates for the latest Mesolithic in the east. So what, what's going on? Now, Roberta's put together some comparative data, and this is coming out in a, a paper from the Forley, um, the Forley IIPP conference, showing that just as in Italy, whoops, we have an island of Neolithic in the Mesolithic, the same picture occurs in Portugal and, and in Greece, and in Greece as well. So what, what, what was the resource location? What brought the Neolithic people to Western Liguria? They brought with them sheep, cereals, pottery, obsidian. We, we know that there's um, Ophiolites from the Voltri group right down in southern Italy. And we have <coughs> pottery with Ophiolitic temper from the Braco Massif in, in these Neolithic sites. We've got Chert coming across Jasper from Lagarara and Flint, Flint from France. <coughs> but why are the dates for West Central Italy so much later? And it's a big problem because if you look at the circulation of the currents, they go around, it's well known, in anti-clockwise circles. So if you were going to sail from Sicily or the bottom of Italy to the north, you would go up the coast. You wouldn't go, well, there's, a, there's an area of non-visibility here, so you'd be very unlikely to go straight to Sardinia. But you wouldn't go that way or that way, you would go this way. So if the currents are doing that, why don't we have early Neolithic there? So 
So it seems to me, that it seems to us, that we must look for early Neolithic dates uh, along the coast of West Central Italy. And there are some indications. So here's a date you might not have in your database. It's from a deep core at Sestri Levante in eastern Liguria. Uh, barley pollen in peat levels dated uh, 622.5992. And that may document Neolithic pioneers at a convenient landing place in an intermediate area. Pollen does suggest some level of permanence to occupation, and that settlement is <coughs> not attested. And of course, there's some older dates in Lazio at La Marmotta, but there there's the danger of the old wood effect. Um, in uh, Banda's paper, there are three dates modelled from Le Secchi on Isola del Giglio, but unfortunately the paper does not report the data. And um, I'd like to make an appeal here that it is not acceptable not to report the data. So priorities for future research are we need more dates from known early Neolithic sites, we need more dates on short-lived samples, and we need to date sites along the western coast of Italy. Now Roberto and I, when we were discussing this paper, wanted to put do more excavation, and we thought, we can't say that, and Rowan said it, so thank you Rowan, but we do need more excavation as well. Thank you very much everybody.